Atheist Nomads, episode 85. That's my name with Nick Morgan Moore. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A R C H W A Y hosting.com. We are the Atheist Nomads bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. This is episode number 85. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Howdy ho, neighbor. And joining us is Nick Morgan Moore. That's correct. That's my name. Nick is a professional comedian uh, and... Going uh, professional, working on it. And a frequent (laughs) guest or uh, participant or whatever you'd call it on the Imaginary Friends show. Uh, Yeah, we've we've taken to calling me the resident comedian because I'm just on every week. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Yeah, sorry, Jake, we're stealing him away. Yeah. He Nick gets so also, jealous. Nick also has the <laughs> distinction of being the first male Australian we've had on the show. Oh, Ooh. yeah, yeah. We've had three female Australians. Now, now well, we finally sh- have a male. To be sure, we oh. haven't we haven't actually checked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've had three Australian women on the show. Who are they? I <laughs> might know them. We've got a much smaller population than you guys. <laughs> Dr. Rachie, uh, Rachel nah. Dunlop, and um, uh, Kylie Sturgis. Not nah, done. Nah, nah, sorry. And uh, Shelly yeah. Siegel. Oh, yeah. Nah. You should know nah. Shelly. Shelly's <laughs> awesome. Oh, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll say, I'll say good day. You think should. They're yeah. all Western Australia. Oh, oh, well, gross. Shel- Shelly tours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, Western Australia is very pretty, but it's very sparse. Like the majority of their state is desert. Hmm. But, but, you know, to be fair, like the majority of my state is bogans, so it's not much better. Oh, God. I've heard yeah, bad well, things of these bogans. Yes, yes, these bogans. Yeah. <laughs> Almost as There's bad as bogans. Southern Wait. cross neck tattoos everywhere. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally become a thing. Eh? Like if, if you're talking to someone and they've got a Southern cross neck tattoo, you just leave. Okay. <laughs> You know, there's a there's a little corresponding thing with this awesome movie that uh, Bobcat Goldfabe put out a couple of years ago called God Bless America. And he's talking <laughs> about these telephones that, you know, everybody calls in for all these, you know, stupid singing shows or whatever to, you know, to for for ratings to all all the people that show on these shows. Anyways, um he he wished that there was these little explosive explosive devices in these phones that would put a mark on their face so that he would like know that person is not going to add any value to my life. Just walk away. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what a Southern Cross neck tattoo does. Just lets everyone know. Wow. I would almost go yeah. as, far, as far as to say that about any neck tattoo. Yeah, yeah. But there are a few yeah. decent people that have them. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Like porn stars and stuff. God mm. bless them. Yeah, they do good work. They do. Yes, they do. Yeah, so what's going on, guys? Uh, uh, fantasize what? Um, okay. So, <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Uh, let's, let's start at the beginning. Um, were you raised religious? Uh, no, no, I was, uh, my parents were both raised as Catholics, but right. they weren't very into any of it. Uh, okay. and my dad still says that he's a Catholic. He says once a Catholic, always a Catholic. I'm mm-hmm. like, dad, you, you don't go to church ever. And <laughs> you, you you bang around like like a fiend. Like my dad is the nice. silver fox, you know. <laughs> like I've been out with my dad and girls my age hit on him. I was like, just wow. once, just once, I'd like them to pay me attention. But like as time goes on, I'm I'm actually losing my hair. My dad still has a thick head of you know silver hair now, but I'm losing my hair, and it's actually working for me. Either that or the curly mustache. It's I was the curly the mustache glow. for two yeah. years, and yeah, that's definitely definitely worked in my advantage. Definitely the glorious mustache, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's wider than my face now. When I when I put it straight <gasps> out to the sides, it's wider Holy than crap. my face. Yeah. I love it. I, and it's not ironic. Anybody out there who's calling me a hipster, I, I like it legitimately. I think it's cool. 
<laughs> All right, fair enough. So, uh, so to answer your question, I got involved with the church when missionaries were allowed to come into my public primary school and preach to us as little children. And, oh yeah, uh, they can do yeah. that over there, can't they? Yes, yes, they can, and it's fucked. So they they were <laughs> sending them in my entire you know childhood. I had uh, you know I was learning you know uh, two plus two equals four. And also, you know, the Earth is 6,000 years old and, you know, dinosaurs were actually dragons that people fought in the Middle Ages uh, because, you know, Scripture Union is the is the uh, organization in the state that I'm at that just sends in Bible teachers. And it's terrible. Like, it should definitely not exist, but it still does. Uh, and they bring in things like, you know, rock bands and people to ride skateboards and tell you that Jesus is rad and all of that stuff. And I wasn't buying it, but my older brother started going to church. Yeah. And, uh, he started taking me to church and I got sucked in by the community there, you know, cause people were paying attention to me. I'm a middle child. So, you know, oh, yeah. uh, a, te- a, a total attention whore. Uh, part of the reason why I later became a comedian, but we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I started going to church with my brother and got saved and we started going to this, uh, Pentecostal Christian church. So it was all about the Holy Spirit. What variety of Christian were the these original missionaries you were dealing with? Um, I think they were just I think they were Church of Christ, which is kind of a mainstream um, church organization. Like they don't do too much with the Holy Spirit. Although they would have anyone who wanted to come in, they just let them in because they're idiots. So they're like yeah. the watered down English uh, C of E then. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I think a little more extreme than them. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, when I started going to the Pentecostal church, we were like, they're wrong, but they're still saved. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah, so there was, there was, you know, a, there was a peaceful sort of coexistence happening there. Um, and so, yeah, we started going to this Pentecostal Christian church and uh, I uh, got saved and wanted to be a missionary because uh, I was friends with a, with a missionary in the church and he had all of these wonderful stories. Uh, and so I started reading the Bible and started going to, uh, going to courses that they ran for much older people. You know, you gotta remember this is when I was like first starting high school. So I would have been what, 13, 14 years old, taking as many, you know, of these extra courses that I could. I really didn't get on with the youth pastor because he was dumb. And I was always, <laughs> I was always a little bit clued on. I could tell how dumb he was. Um, and so, uh, uh, one of the biggest rifts between me and my church is that uh, they kept harping on about the end times and ha- and about the rapture and like they'd play bloody oh what was it the Kirk Cameron Left Behind movie <laughs> they'd have like oh. movie night and everyone would watch that and they're like this is exactly how it's gonna be but because I wasn't a moron I uh, I actually looked for alternative uh, interpretations and I identified as a preterist. So at the time, I believed that everything that uh, the book of Revelation was talking about happened in 70 AD with the destruction of Jerusalem, which uh, very possibly could have happened if, if in fact, the, the book of Revelation was written at the time and not much, much later and then added in. Uh, or even if it was written much, much later and added in, it could have been referencing uh, the events of AD 70 and the destruction of Jerusalem. <laughs> but uh, it Regardless, I uh, I didn't fit in on that one point, and because of that, uh, the pastors just hated me. They they kept trying to bring me round, but I I just wasn't having it. Well, because that's that's a pretty heretical view, uh, saying yes. that Revelation's that, that is history a giant sticking point. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, the the thing is that the end time, the current interpretation of end times theology is actually very new. I I discovered that with uh, with the research I was doing at the time. It had only been around for. Uh, one or one or two hundred years, you know, some preachers wanted to really put the fire in the people. So they're like, no, no, the world's literally ending. And uh, some people who take glee in the idea of the unbelievers burning in the pit would just sort of latched onto it and held onto it. That would be all my be- Baptist relatives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. If you don't go to that church, you're going to hell. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, so to move a little further through my life as a Christian, um, I, you got to remember, like, uh, probably incidental, I was so fat at the time. I was so <laughs> fat. I was, I was 165 kilos. So that's, that's a lot of pounds. Um, and so, four or five hundred. yeah, <laughs> four or 500. I think I was like three something. Anyways, nice. yeah, yeah, I you, was huge for, for, uh, Wesley and, and, 
<laughs> our other else. metric illiterate uh, listeners, the conversion from kilo to pound is 2.2. Oh, yeah. wow. So basically double and then round up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So I was 300, I was almost 370 pounds at my largest. So I was, I was a big old fat guy. And I was preaching the word with, with fire, you know, like you probably, you probably would have, uh, been used to that in the Baptist from the Baptist family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah fire, sure. brimstone, all that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like preaching the Holy Spirit because it was like, you know, the, the real movement of God in, in the earth. But I later found out that was complete bullshit. I'll tell you about how that happened in a bit. <laughs> We're going through chronologically now. All right. So I got to 19. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I want to be a missionary. So I just bought a plane ticket and flew to China without knowing anyone or knowing where I was going to stay. And, nice. uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I actually had a really fun time. I, uh, I met people over there and found places to stay. And I, uh, I looked up the expat church and, you know, they had some, you know, support there available. So I was able to live with a few people from there for a while. Uh, I didn't actually accomplish much, uh, thankfully, you know, now that I look back on it, I'm like, good, good that you didn't save anyone for Jesus in a place where that would probably negatively impact their life. Uh, but I did get to go to a, an orphanage and give KFC and Christmas presents to the orphans. And that was, <laughs> that was really fun, but it was mostly an excuse for the people from the expat church to feel good about themselves at Christmas. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if they actually cared, they would have done something. But anyway, I'm, I'm sure that I, I know that the KFC was was well appreciated by the orphans because they ate every scrap of what was there, and that was lots of fun. Uh, so I was there for uh, three or four months, and then came back when I ran out of money and uh, kept working in the church. I actually took a pastoral internship in the church, and that lasted a little while. But while I was there, I started to have these sort of niggling doubts that were. Uh, in my church, everyone was led by the Holy Spirit. You know, God tells you to do, you know, something and you do it. And, you know, then if it works, yeah, it was God. And if it didn't work, then, oh, you were hearing wrong because you're a sinner. <laughs> uh, and I, I remember going to talk to the senior pastor about some something that was going on with me. I think uh, at the time uh, while I was working in the church as a uh, as an intern pastor, I was so poor that I couldn't afford to buy food. And uh, I was taking the leftovers from the homeless shelter, and I actually got really sick from eating uh, the bums' leftovers. Mm. Um, and uh, while I was having this meeting with the pastor, just talking about how you know how much I was struggling, a uh, a dude came in um, and told the pastor, "Oh, the Lord has told me to go on a missions trip. Uh, would you give me your endorsement?" So they prayed for him and gave him his endorsement, and he went around the church. And asked everyone in the church for money, which they gave to him, and then he went and spent it all on meth. So I, I started <laughs> wow. to think that maybe people just heard from the Lord what they wanted to hear from the Lord, and it wasn't actually God speaking. Um, and around that time, I stopped going to church because I, I just had enough. And uh, my older brother had a disagreement with someone in the church over a business matter, and the person threatened to murder my brother and his newborn son. Right. He said, uh, if I see you walking down the street, I'm going to run you and your son over uh, in my car. So it was like, yeah, okay. And then next week, that guy was on stage getting, you know, kudos from the pastors and the leadership about the good work that Lord had done, the Lord had done in that guy's life. And I was like, nah, fuck you guys. Fuck you forever. And uh, my older brother is actually uh, an ordained pastor, but he's not working in the church at the moment. He's doing his, uh, his building thing, which is good. Uh, I think that's probably a better choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, I, I only preached once at church, uh, towards the end there. I, I was, I did a, you know, short course on preaching and I learned all of the tricks and the methods for writing a sermon and how to cherry pick the Bible to find your, your points that you need, like legitimately. Um, and I preached and I remember getting off stage and feeling like a liar. You know, it didn't feel right for me to be doing that. And then uh, a, a few years later, after identifying as an atheist and losing 65 kilos and starting to sleep with girls, I, uh, I got on stage and I did some comedy and I killed and I stepped off stage feeling like I was telling the truth. And it was nice. awesome. Yeah. So that's that's why I'm a comedian. And uh, I love being a comedian. I hear it's a hell of a rush. 
it is so good. Like, uh, yeah, I would put it on par. Killing in front of a large crowd, I would put on par with a religious experience. You know, when when uh, people talk about the Holy Spirit and how you can feel God touching you, that's that's not God. That's just an endorphin rush. You're putting yourself into a headspace and expecting something to happen and uh, getting on stage and creating something and then sharing it with people and getting that immediate reaction. Uh, that gives you that same endorphin rush, but you know where it comes from and that makes it more real. So that's why I'm a comedian. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's it's a... a- Good transition to go from putting people to sleep to making people laugh. Yes, yes, absolutely. No, I, I, I love it. It's so good. I, uh, I started getting Skype called into people's parties because I got a lot of friends in the states <laughs> now from doing podcasts. So I started getting <laughs> Skype called to, into people's parties to do sets for their friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like just just the other day, I got like drunk dialed by a bunch of girls, and they're like, "Yeah, we're having a party. Tell us some jokes." And I was like <laughs> so tired, and I was like, "What? Did, like my jokes are heinous and filthy. Like, what do you what do you actually want from me right now?" And uh, and one of her friends was like, "I just want to hear you speak." And I was like, "Oh yeah, all right. Well, I guess that uh, if if that's what you want, then that's what you'll get." So I just went through the alphabet, saying dirty <laughs> words or dirty things that I could apply to each word. And it actually worked really well because there was apparently a guy at the party who was trying to hook up with this chick and, uh, and my voice was so sexy that, uh, she and a friend took me into the bathroom via Skype and showed me boobs. And when they took me back outside, the guy cracked the shits and left. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Wow. I've got a projector. I'm putting you on. I'm going to be drunk dialing your ass pretty soon here. Oh, wicked. Yeah, dude, if you throw a party, let me know. I'll, I'll actually put together a set for you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. oh, boy. So, h- so how'd, you get, how'd you get mixed up with uh, Jake and uh, skepticism or just stuff like this? Just odd stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I left the, uh, I left the church and for a few years there, I was really, um, sort of not sure of what was going on. You know, I was always smart and, you know, trying to think my way through things. So I was trying to reformulate an entire worldview from scratch. Um, and so I was, I was working on that for a while. And then I found podcasts and I found a few that really sort of resonated with how I was feeling towards the church and God and all of that. And, uh, and started listening, you know, to a, a lot of these podcasts and, uh, you know, cognitive dissonance was one and, uh, the imaginary <laughs> friends show was another. Mm. Uh, and I'd, I had actually heard Jake on the radio, um, before I'd become an atheist. And, uh, I remember just like hearing him talk and I was like, that guy sounds really smart. And then later I found <laughs> his podcast and, uh, and I was like, Oh, I was wrong. He saved it all for that radio interview. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so after listening to his show for a while and and doing comedy i uh, i just sent him a message uh saying hey do you want me on and he goes yeah and uh he's had me on like every week for the last seven or eight months now so i think i think i pretty much worked wormed my way in there and uh yeah i love it i, I really like jake he's a really good guy uh we met in person and really hit it off too so it's good it's good yeah i think it's about the time that you get a co-host credit man yeah, yeah. Tell Jake that. I think I think he wants to. I think he's about there. So that's that's if he doesn't boot me off for cheating on him with other podcasts. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he better not. Yeah, no. Well, if he listens, if he listens, he might change his mind. Because yeah, like I, I, I have to, I I have to rein it in. Yeah, I've, yeah. He he doesn't really listen to other people at all, Wes. So it's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's all right. I, <laughs> yeah. So, it's, not uh, like so it's not like we're using a condom here either. So, <laughs> so that's mm. how that happened. <sighs> yeah. All right, let's yeah. let's backtrack a little bit with the <laughs> yeah. Ask me questions. The whole churches operating in schools thing you guys yeah. have oh, yeah. down there that, that incredibly backwards program. Uh, yep. How the how do they choose? Uh. Choose who goes into the church, yeah. into the school. Yeah. Well, uh, it, they just take, um, well, actually it's, it's completely fucked. Um, it's changed recently for the worse. Uh, what's happened is in the past, uh, companies would come or organizations would come to the government and say, we have a, 
uh, Bible curriculum as part of, you know, our country being a nominally Christian country, even though we're way, way more apathetic towards it than the United States uh, because of history where we're nominally Christian. And so Bible studies is part of the curriculum. So they allow uh, organizations to put in a tender and then they pay them some amount of money and they send in uh, people with resources to indoctrinate your kids for you. Um, and I, I really resent that now. I really sort of wish that my parents had looked into it and gone, no, but, you know, they're still doing their own thing. They don't they don't really care about religion at all, even though they both normally, well, my mum's not even normally Catholic anymore. She's sort of new agey. She talks to her plants, but in her, in her flower <laughs> voice. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Which, which is nice for her. She's actually got really nice gardens, so it must be working. That's how that works, right? Um, well, well, no more young kids at home, so, you know, that's her, <laughs> yeah. her, her baby, so yeah. totally understand. I talk to my cats. Yes, yeah, oh, I love talking to my cats. I, I give them funny voices and make them do dumb stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just like, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, that's how the uh, the organizations get into the primary schools. In the high schools, they didn't have uh, anything except for maybe once a year they'd have people come in and preach at you. But um, it's changed recently where uh, they were paying for uh, – they, they basically had a choice to make. They could either send in trained professional counsellors to help the kids with their problems or send in paid uh, – what is it? Chaplains into the schools to preach God at them. And they went with the chaplains because right. our prime minister is a, is a, a conservative Christian. And uh, they were sued. They were sued for doing this because uh, the way that we were able to sue them was actually uh, the funds. The funds were coming from a, a source that wasn't technically legal, you know, just f- funny money business. Uh, so what the government decided to do rather than pulling their funding was to give them all of their money in one hit so that it couldn't be taken away from them and remove oversight. So now they've spent $200 million odd dollars on on uh, on these uh, chaplains to go into the schools and uh, there's no oversight. The government can't tell them to stop. So Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's just assholes in power throwing, throwing money away while they're crying about how much of a debt our country is in and using it to cut, you know, uh, resources to people who need them. Uh, meanwhile, we're perpetrating uh, human rights abuses against asylum seekers on Manus Island. So, you know, it's, it's a good time to be an Australian. Yeah. Motherfuckers. <laughs> so with the, the primary schools, are they still just bidding out contracts? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, I know in Queensland, it's Scripture Union is the name of the organization. Um, and they still send people into schools with uh, once a week for lessons with, uh, with resources, you know, little workbooks for them to work through to get properly indoctrinated. Yeah. Okay. Man, I get so depressed talking about this stuff. Can we talk about boobs? <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, I have a joke I in my like stand-up mine. about boobs, uh, which I'll share now because I haven't used it on stage in a while, so I may as well turn it into a podcast bit. Uh, I talk about how the reason, the real reason that I left the church was because of boobs, because when you're a Christian, uh, especially a, uh, uh evangelical Pentecostal Christian like I was, you're only supposed to see five boobs in your entire life, you know? <laughs> Uh, one of them belongs to your mother because the other one would either have a child in front of it or have a, uh, be tastefully covered. Uh, two of them belong to your wife because the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Uh, and the other two are yours because Christians are fat. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay for me to say that because I was so fat when I was a Christian. <laughs> what, n- uh, not like a sixth, the one that's standing behind the pew at the front there? Oh, uh, no, we, we, we don't call people boobs here. We call them uh, cunts. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's like the same, the same thing though. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the, the last few times I preached, I, I saw boobs. Cool. Uh, I, I was preaching in, in Mexico and, uh, mm-hmm. the, there was a lot of young mothers there who would whip out a boob and feed their baby. Yeah. Nice. And I'd be and good, preaching and along and look down <laughs> and be like, oh crap, oh, there's boobs. <laughs> 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 when you're super repressed as a christian like that could be the end of you but like as, as an atheist who gets boobs whenever i want that's like not even a thing to me anymore i see people breastfeeding i'm like whatever mm-hmm. unless yeah. they're real good in which case i'm like that lucky baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, if I see really nice boobs, it just takes that extra half second for me to say, eh, whatever. But I'm like, yeah, <laughs> eh, whatever, okay. Yeah. And then moving on along. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where, 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 do you, where do you live right now? Queensland? Uh, I live, yeah, I live in sunny Queensland, which is mm. like the Australian Bible Belt. It's it's not as extreme as the U.S. Bible Belt, but there's more churches and Christians here than there are in other places. <laughs> Heard something like uh, you call that the uh, the Northern Bible Belt or something. There's something like a okay. cute little way to say it. No like idea. We, we have the Southern Bible Belt here. Mm. But anyways, I'll shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't eat that part, please. Good call. Shut up, Wesley. All right. <laughs> Vapor. Yeah. I need to get that sound bite from from the next generation. Oh fuck! All right, fair enough. <laughs> you guys are Car. trekkies. Fuck I yeah, am. yeah. Yep. You guys have you guys checked out Babylon Five? Bab Five? Yeah, I watched it a bit. It's been a couple yeah. of years though. Way better than Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. I haven't watched that one yet, but uh, my fiance and I have been working through Star Trek uh, in order of star date, and we are <laughs> oh, nearly yeah. finished. Okay. We we did make one deviation from that with because you know, Voyager. It's so far away that it doesn't follow the timeline and kind of would detract from the, the Deep Space Nine timeline. Uh, yeah, so, no, and, and, and to be honest, like the, the amount of distance that they traveled would, uh, would cause some sort of time dilation effect, which would screw up all the timelines anyway. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so, so, so just, just, just a question about the method that you're watching them in. Does that mean you watched Enterprise first? Yes. You poor, poor man. I actually liked <laughs> Enterprise. Like, I, I, I did. Know. I did. Yeah. Half of I did season one was all. good. Season three uh, was okay, but four was yeah. great. Yeah, I reckon it got better over time. I reckon that uh, each successive season was better than the one before it, yeah. S- season two really did suck ass, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. season two was a bit crappy, but then it definitely picked up its game. I'm so glad that Scott Bakula got the captain's chair, though. It was really good to see him in another sci-fi. I used to watch Quantum Leap as a kid, and I thought that yeah. was really interesting. Yeah, fucking yeah. A, I love that show. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I really, I, I was a huge fan of Babylon 5 after I left the church. I was watching that a whole heap because, you know, just trying to fill in time when I would otherwise have been praying or reading my Bible. And uh, I really, really fell for it. I thought it was really good. The graphics is really dated now because it's so old. But yeah. uh, things that I really liked about it is that, like, after the first two seasons, um, Straczynski fired his entire writing staff and wrote every single episode himself. And these are, these are long seasons. They're like 22 to 25 episode seasons. Oh, so shit. that's, that's so much work. And he just did it because it was his vision he was bringing to life. And there's one exception to that entire time that he was writing every episode. And that was the episode Day of the Dead, which was written by, uh, author and, uh, wonderful human being extraordinaire Neil Gaiman. Oh, and, nice. And that episode starred Penn and Teller as Revo and Zudi. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good show. <laughs> Game is nice. fucking awesome, though. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. I uh, That's another thing that really helped me after I'd left the church. American Gods was it is my favorite novel. That book just gets me so much. Man. Yeah. He did Sandman, didn't he? Um, yeah. I actually uh, read Sandman from him first. I read Sandman as the graphic novel. Um, and I read a few of his other, his other graphic novel works that he did. His, his death series, which is a spinoff from the, uh, from mm-hmm. the Sandman, they were just two short runs, but they were both really, really good. Um, and I also got really into Lucifer, uh, which wasn't Neil Gaiman, but it was based on the Neil Gaiman Lucifer, uh, from the mm-hmm. Sandman universe. I think it was Mike Carey wrote that one. Um, and that is one of the best graphic novels, uh, hands down. I recommend that to people when they want to see exactly how much, uh, when people are talking about, you know, high art and literature versus, you know, lowbrow, uh, I always bring up Lucifer as the example of how graphic novels are, can be literature, definitely are. Fucking A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More. No, seriously, uh, more people should recognize uh, comics, graphic novels as as much more than what people think of them as just oh, I, trash, trash, pulpy things. Absolutely. E- even the ones that are heinous, like uh, Garth Ennis is one of my favorite you know, uh, go- uh, graphic novel authors. Um, and his stuff is just so dark, but so well constructed. 
and uh, people who've seen my uh, my stand up probably see that I'm trying to do that in my jokes. I go really dark, but I work so hard on the construction of the joke and the themes that uh, often they'll slip by people's radars. So I'll tell just the most heinous joke that anyone could think of, and it still gets a laugh, and it still kills. And people go home and start telling the jokes to their friends, and then they realize just how dirty it is and how they're not doing it justice, and they just sound like a filthy, filthy person. And I get this little (laughs) feeling of glee in my heart knowing that I did that. (laughs) There's an amazing series, just real quick, called Chew by John Lehman and Rob Gilroy. This dude, like a kind of a slightly futuristic cop, uh, thing basically he's a chiba path yeah basically he has to eat something to and he can visualize get uh feelings emotions and like whole uh, he, yeah. scenes, scenes Any, of, anything like, crime anything he eats will uh he gets a psychic imprint of its entire course there you go except for beetroots yeah beets, beets. as you guys and so them. that's what he eats all the fucking yeah. time poor <laughs> guy uh, apparently that's going to be turned into a TV series with the uh, Asian dude from The Walking Dead. Oh, nice. Uh, they, I reckon just visually it would totally work. <laughs> I Because he's, he's a skinny Asian guy. That's it. <laughs> sure, totally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure they could pick any other skinny Asian guy. I don't think Jet Li would really work in that role. He's too old and he's too short and he's not as skinny. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, I just don't know how they're going to you know, do the chicken, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I, I can lend these to you. Destin. These are <laughs> actually really fun. Definitely give them a read, dude. They're good. They're <laughs> a good series. Who else is really good? Have you guys read saga? No, get on saga right now. It is probably the best thing currently being published as a graphic novel. It's uh, it's coming out monthly as an ongoing series, but the first couple uh first couple have been condensed into a trade paperback. It's like uh it's like Star Wars on math. It's it's so good. Like it's it's uh Brian K Vaughn's uh latest oh. latest go at, yeah. And it is good, like seriously good. It's better than anything that I've seen on TV in the past few years. So definitely check them out. Hmm. Yeah. Also, yeah, I'm a massive nerd. That's a, that's another <laughs> thing about me you might, you might pick up on. Oh, and the, my biggest favorite uh, sci-fi show was fucking just Firefly and Serenity. Yep, yep. I uh, I definitely point that out to people as something that was potentially going to be amazing. Uh, I I tell people it's not the best sci-fi TV series ever made because it was cancelled. Mm-hmm, you know, yeah. I reckon I reckon it would have gotten even better than it was, and uh, definitely would have fleshed out into something amazing. And I've read the I've read the uh, the comics that he's done since then. Uh, the one that was a follow of the bridging between them, and one that was the uh, episode that they never got to make, and. I think there was mm-hmm. another one. Oh yeah, they did. He did tell Shepard's story. So anybody who's uh, who watched the show and the movie and were like, "What the hell is going on with Shepard?" You do <laughs> actually find that out. Mm. So yeah, uh, yeah. Be- between the end of the show and when they find him almost dead, yeah, mm. uh, yeah. They uh, they they fill in his backstory, Shepard's tale. Ah, uh, oh, yeah. really? Yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, written by Zach Whedon, so you know it's pretty decent. I like how Joss Whedon brings his brothers into stuff. I'm, I'm not. I'm probably not going to. My little brother's bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just say that because he's skinnier than me. Well, is he prettier? Uh, I've been told no. I've been told that my my mustache definitely lends uh, in my favor, and he can only grow one side of his mustache. Right. So he's uh, yeah. But no, he's he's actually he's really ripped. He's he's been hitting the gym like crazy. So he he looks like young Arnold Schwarzenegger. And like I've I've still got a few kilos to lose. Like I'm down seventy kilos now, um, and I'm I want to go another ten or fifteen to get to sort of my peak physical condition, and then I'll I'll need to get skin reduction surgery because I've got loose skin already from being so fat. And uh, once I get that done, I'll start on my tattoos. But I'm not going to start before then. They're not going to let you in the U.S. as a you know to stay here if you're in that good of shape. <laughs> I better, I better come over soon. (laughs) Oh boy. So what's the, the comedy scene like where you're at? Uh, 
Yeah, comedy here is really at, at the moment. It's really good. Uh, it's it's a very hard scene in Australia. Uh, basically, you can be a professional stand up comedian and you still need another job. Uh, you have to be absolutely top tier to do it for a living, uh, which is one of the reasons why I can't afford to buy food because uh, I, I lost my my job recently and that sucks. But um, I, I want to go pro. I want to take it on the road and do it for a living. Uh, but it's just so hard to do that here. Um, in terms of the comedy co- uh, quality, it's top notch. The uh, the Brisbane scene, um, and w- I live closer to the Gold Coast. Uh, there's only a couple rooms on the Gold Coast, so really it's combined. You know, it's it's two cities an hour away from each other um, that share comedians, and they're all fantastic at the moment. We've got a really good class of uh, comedians stepping up. And uh, we've had a lot of uh, international acts and national acts come through Brisbane and hit up the open mic scenes, and they've just left glowing reviews of what's going on. Uh, obviously, they didn't see my set, so that's why that happened. I would have totally brought it down a couple notches. <laughs> I've heard some really good things about the Brisbane Comedy Festival. Have yes. You gotten, that's, have you been in there? Uh, no, uh, that's going on at the moment. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to, uh, some of my friends have shows. I'm definitely going to hit up a bunch of shows there, but, uh, I haven't gotten one in that yet. I'm not up to doing a a quite up to doing a festival show yet. That's what I'm working on. By the end of the year, I want to be producing festival shows to take nationally and, you know, fingers crossed internationally. Um, but I'm, I'm, my decision when I started comedy was focus on getting good first. So sure. I, I spent my first three years not doing, you know, any sort of promo stuff. I didn't have a Facebook page. I didn't, you know, uh, push my Twitter that much. I, I was just focusing on getting good. And then about a year ago, I, uh, I for somehow took a step up and started just consistently doing really, really well. Um, and since then I've started to be offered paid spots and, uh, and I'm doing my first MC gig at the end of this month. Mm. Uh, which is really exciting for me. You, you need to learn, there's skills you need to learn how to do longer sets. And, uh, one of them is being on stage without jokes, uh, to fill in time before your next joke. And when you're getting five to 10 minutes, you just don't have the opportunity to develop that skill. Um, so that's why MCing is really good. So that's why I'm, mm. I'm putting my, ne- my name out there to do some MC work to get that skill so that I can kick up the comedy into the next area as well. Nice. Yeah. <coughs> There's always more to learn. You know, every time I step off stage, I'm looking at what I could have done better or, or looking at what I did really well and, and figuring out how to carry that across. Are there any common themes in the jokes that people tell? Because, like, I've seen, uh, you know, for a few examples around Boise, a lot of jokes are about how people are uh, liberals living in a very conservative state or atheists or they're Christians, but not that kind of Christian. <laughs> Um, and it, yeah. Seattle or like Portland, it's a lot of uh, I'm poor and depressed and do drugs. And <laughs> Sacramento's yep. I'm poor and depressed and do meth and. <laughs> yep, uh, here I guess that it'd be um, everyone's. I, I reckon that like ninety nine percent of uh, of comedians are atheists. Uh, all of everyone is incredibly blasphemous, and you know just cause. It's because the Christians here keep arcing up, you know, like there was the, there was the gay and lesbian Mardi Gras in Sydney and a Christian group bought ad time during its televised uh, release to say that uh, uh, gay sex is bad and gay marriage is wrong. So like, even though the Christians aren't, uh, aren't a majority by any means, they're a very vocal minority. So uh, comedians are very often responding to that. Um, so all of the comedians here bash on, you know, whatever they can in that regard. Uh, what else? Um, just thinking about it. The government sucks. Our government is, our government is just made up of shit piles, you know, so we often call them out. I remember, um, Bill Burr recently was doing his tour in Australia and he doesn't do research on his, uh, on his crowds. And, uh, he got up and was talking about how, like, the, the, uh, his one that he does in the States is about how much the president makes and how it's not very much. And he deserves more because he's running a country. And he tried the same joke about our prime minister and he almost got booed off of stage. <laughs> <laughs> and so he should have. That, that guy is garbage. He is so bad. It is just absolutely ridiculous that we have him as our prime minister. So. 
Oh, I thought you were talking about Bill Burr. <laughs> oh, no, I love Bill Burr. Bill Burr rocks. Sorry, I wasn't very clear just there. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Yeah. I used to listen to a podcast a lot uh, with uh, Eddie Ift and Jim Jeffries. Oh, uh, I love that one. Talking shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, you know, one of the things he, uh, Eddie always said to, about being an MC and uh, announcing people is basically have everybody write down, tell you what they want to have said. Yes. And yeah. then do, do whatever fuck all you want to, but yeah. definitely don't put, don't say <laughs> what they wrote. Yes. <laughs> that's a, that's a good move. That's a really good move. <laughs> Oh man, my friend was emceeing a gig just the other week and one guy was uh, going on and on and on about his stage name and he, he, he emphasized it. Fi- I heard him emphasize it five times before <laughs> the show. This is my stage name. It's not my real name. This is my real name. Don't use my real name. Use my stage name. It's this. And he went over it and over it and over it <laughs> and over it. And my friend got up on stage and said, fuck you and announced his real name <laughs> and just handed it over to him. <laughs> Uh, the guy was an asshole. It, it, he, yeah, so it was good. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is funny. That's that's another thing. A, a different theme uh, in in the current um, comedy circuit that I'm at. There's so many wonderful people. It's it's really shocking to go to a gig and meet a stand up comedian who is an asshole. So yeah, when you do, you just you just give them hell because they deserve it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It sounds like the uh, it'd be the the most fun little in group ever. Just you know, telling jokes, having fun, and just talking shit. Yeah, yeah. No, being a comedian definitely rocks. Um, yeah, I, I just recently there was just a night that was so fucked. We were at this, uh, we were at a pub, and there was a huge storm raging through our city, and everybody had like evacuation warnings and all kinds of shit. And uh, so I went to this gig anyway because I'm a beast and. Um, there was like no crowd there was like 10 people in the audience and uh, and then there was like another 10 people up the back of the same room just celebrating a birthday party and they weren't getting involved with the comedy at all and everyone was bombing and i remember all the comedians you know in between sets were saying oh well one of these nights is the nights where it's good to bond together and and suffer together and i got on stage and the uh the birthday party heard me and came on down and i absolutely slaughtered and then when i was done they went away again so <laughs> i uh I, I was the entire time they're like oh it was such a hard night i was like i don't know what you guys are talking about <laughs> I don't, what, what's what, what happened when you were on stage i don't know i only know what happened when i was on stage <laughs> all right I, I, maybe i'm the asshole i think i might be the asshole yeah, yeah just a bit it, it kind of is my comedy persona. I'm like an asshole that people love and they don't know why. So that's, uh, that's sort of what works for me. That and being a villain. I've, uh, I've seen online people have been commenting on how much I look like a villain. And, uh, that's definitely my stand up. I'm, I'm definitely a villain while I'm on stage. God, which, yes. Uh, and, you need a cape you know, and a stovepipe hat, man. Yeah, but people keep telling me, yeah, a, a monocle <laughs> and a, and a top hat or, uh, yeah, all of that. Uh, I, I did pick up a really nice uh, Giorgio Armani jacket for $6 out of a church bin uh, the other week that fits me perfectly and just totally works with my look. So that's good. Nice. Yeah. I, I dress up a bit more than the other comedians at the moment, um, except for one guy who, uh, for some reason, uh, does comedy in a dress. He's, he's not trans or anything. He just does comedy while he's dressed as a lady and doesn't address it, which which is funny, but people don't get it. <laughs> But uh, huh. yeah, I, I put on I put on nice suits to do my thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a, I'm at a loss for for your <laughs> friend there. That that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's <laughs> cool. He's a cool guy. Well, that, that'd be Go enough over. to distract people for about the first you know thirty seconds a- until he actually gets to a good joke. So. Oh, yeah, he just needs to get his look so shocking that he can distract them for five to ten so that they, they won't notice that his entire set is shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I say that, but uh, he knows that I love his jokes. He he does really long-winded ones. Uh, I think the thing that he, he needs to work on and something that I worked on is dumbing down your jokes. If you, If your jokes are too smart, you'll lose your crowd, and it sucks 
because it's not your fault, but at, at the same time, you're there to get laughs, you're there to do your thing. And if you work on it and rewrite it and hash over it, you can get the same joke in a way that they'll understand. And so that's, that's something that I've been really working on. And maybe that's what, uh, maybe that was the difference that allowed me to step up my game in the last year. Well, even a smart crowd with a couple of drinks in them needs, you know, a little bit more <laughs> than a little more help than a sober one would. Yeah. And yeah, like, just to be honest, this is Australian crowds in Queensland. So you're not going to be getting very many of those smart crowds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true, well, everybody's probably true. drinking too much uh, Fosters anyway. That's shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> you know about Fosters, right? Like, that's uh-huh. why you said it. Yeah. Nobody drinks Fosters. Not a single person <laughs> drinks Fosters. Fosters is the beer that foreign people name because that's an Australian beer because we send it to you guys because it sucks. We've we drink had commercials that say Fosters, Australian for beer. <laughs> no, that's not right. That's not like if you go into a bar, they don't have Fosters on tap. They don't have Fosters in bottles in the fridge. You can't get Fosters. Actually, we never see it in bottles. It's always in those giant cans. Ugh. Yeah. Well, you know, we don't have it here, so I wouldn't even know. Like, the the, the Australian beer, and, like, the thing is, the really famous ones are shit anyway. Like, Forex is one of the most famous Australian beers, and it sucks. Uh, Forex Gold is, like, passable, but, yeah, you don't, you don't want to make that your actual drink. Even worse is VB, Victoria Bitter. That just... Uh, it tastes so bad. Like if you if you want to drink a good beer, you have to look for something with a weird name, like Hop Hog. Uh, no idea. I'm drawing a blank on beer names right now, anyway, because I mostly drink cider. That that follows. Like I'm drinking uh, Moose Drool right now. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. What what do we got? We got uh, Fat Yak is one of the ones that's pretty common here. Uh, there's a bunch of, uh, pales, ales, and pilsners that have really weird names. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't think of any right now. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm real tired. I haven't eaten today because I'm poor, but, uh, usually I'm a little more lively than this. You might have picked up from my other podcasts. Let's try and kick it in the dick a bit. Wake up. Oh, oh, I'm having another cigarette. <laughs> <sighs> and I guess one question that's, that uh, everybody's probably dying to know, even though by the time, it won't quite be relevant by the time this airs, but how's tomorrow? Uh, yeah, it's over cloud. Uh, it's cloudy, which is good. It's fucking hot, which is normal. Um, and so far, nothing extreme has happened today. Although I haven't checked the news, so maybe Australia's under attack, and I don't know or care. <laughs> so we shouldn't look forward to like an alien invasion or anything like that. All right. uh, not to my not not to my knowledge, uh, All right. unless unless you're talking about like asylum seekers, in which case, what I recommend you do is lock them up without due process and abuse the hell out of them and murder some of them. That's the Australian way. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's yeah. Actually, actually, I kind of thought you were gonna say that was the American way, but no, yeah, we don't do that to no. asylum seekers. We only do that to people we capture in foreign countries and, and yeah, brown and people who live there. Well, and then yeah. take them to other foreign countries to torture. And yeah, offer. yeah, or, or brown people from your country. Is, yeah, uh, is what mm-hmm. I'm getting at. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah. What are you What are you guys doing to to refugees? Uh, the government has them locked up on Manus Island, and uh, there's been multiple documents uh, released of human rights abuses happening there. The United Nations sent in some inspectors, and they gave it a D rating and said, you guys need to fix this. Uh, and our prime minister said no. Our prime minister said, oh, you're doing that for political reasons. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We're not doing anything. And uh, conditions there are so shitty. Like just in the one of the reports that I was reading, it was outlining the amount of um, uh, the water that they're given every day. Everyone is given 200 mils of water to drink every day, uh, which isn't enough to survive. So they're you know drinking water out of drains and toilets to stay alive. Uh, there's been, there's been hunger strikes. There's been, uh, guards murdering people in the prison. Um, there was a riot in the prison where people were, uh, not people from the prison rioting, people from the nearby village coming and killing people in the, in the, uh, in the asylum seeker refuge camp. Uh, because it's in Papua New Guinea and apparently that's okay to happen over there. And our government just sort of held their hands up and said, nothing to do with us. It's not happening in Australia. 
which is just complete not a bullshit because it's our navy who's going out and uh, disabling their boats and towing them to Manus Island where they're supposedly getting uh, processed to see if they've got uh, refugee claim uh, able to claim a refugee status but a lot of these people are uh, uh, don't have documents because they had to flee for fear of their lives and uh, it makes this incredibly difficult so I guess they figured the best way to treat them is uh, is like criminals. And uh, wow, yeah, which just absolutely unequivocally sucks. Man, yeah, it's, it's really heartbreaking. Like I, I am furious at my country right now. And you've got some pretty shitty neighbors, so there's there's good reasons for people to be trying to leave. <laughs> got shitty neighbors. You're talking about New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more like the, uh, you know, caliphates and, and dictatorships to the north. Oh, uh, yeah. We're mostly, um, uh, they're actually trying to come to Australia via there. So we get a lot of people sort of from the Middle East um, and, you know, quite a few from those areas as well. You're talking about like Indonesia, for yeah. example. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they are pretty crap. I'll give you that. Yeah. Like, um, uh, but it's it's a lot of people traveling through. Uh, down from the rest of the world through Indonesia, getting on um, people smuggler boats to try and get to Australia. But uh, but yeah, it's it's a really hard world for a lot of people right now. And uh, Australians seem to go, well, it's okay for us. So what are they complaining about? Which is awful. So that's that's contributing to the problem. Um, and housing them in New Guinea is is just wrong. It's just unequipped. Like, there was people from the Asylum Seeker Center who were released into New Guinea because uh, they they were told, you're not getting into Australia. We pretty much can't sell you home, so you can live in New Guinea if you want. And so they were released from the Asylum Seeker Center, went to live in New Guinea, faced even harsher persecution than at home, and went back and checked themselves back into the Asylum Seeker Center because it's better to be locked up than to be free in New Guinea if you're an Asylum Seeker. Holy oh, crap. Shit. Yeah, like it's so depressing, guys. It's it's and, just and awful. How, when, what rate does Australia have to say you're stuck here in New Guinea? Yeah, exactly. But we've got a we've got deals with the New Guinea government. They pretty much do whatever we tell them in a lot of regards because we give them money. So uh, so yeah, that's sort of how that goes. Oh, the thing that shits me so hard is when people say, uh, oh, they don't have a right to come over here and impose their ways over here. Like, that's what they wanted to do, you know? Like, they w- all they wanted to do was live, mm-hmm. all right? But, like, let's just think back 200 years and wonder if there was a people group in the region doing something similar. <laughs> For the uninitiated, that's when the First Fleet rocked up in Australia and started just imposing white manville on top of the native Australians who haven't mm-hmm. very fared very well under colonial rule, uh, unfortunately. And this week, the uh, Prime Minister of Australia, in fact, I believe it was today, I saw some things cropping up in my news feed, made the comment that uh, if Aboriginals are unhappy with Australia... It's due to their lifestyle choices of living in their tribes and not further integrating. So, fuck you, Tony Abbott. Fuck you. Yeah. Like, they've been systematically discriminated against, uh, removed from their homes, removed from from their lands. Um, Children were taken away from the groups. Uh, There's still that happening in the Northern Territory. Um, And they're... there is, well, the thing that huh. makes it so hard is the, the places where the children are being taken away. There's massive drug and alcohol problems, but, uh, like that's systemic from the abuse that their people have, have received. You know, like de- definitely if children are in a, a dangerous situation, then they need to be taken and placed somewhere where they're safe, but they should really be working on fixing the problems, uh, within these communities so that they have a, a safe, healthy, happy place to live. But uh, the government doesn't seem to give a fuck about anyone unless their skin color's white and they've got money in their pockets. Man, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, depressing, I'm, I'm, guys. I apologize for bringing this podcast down so much. <laughs> I woke up in a bad I, mood because I was looking at this online. I was like, shit, I've got to leave. <laughs> if anybody in the United States would put up a, a, a stand-up comedian for a couple months, let me know. <laughs> Our last episode was on how fucked up Idaho is. Oh, right. yeah, it's really fucked up. And yeah. I, I live here. 
<laughs> okay. So I, I feel your pain. Yeah, good, I good. just live in the land of legal weed, so fuck it, and gay marriage, so yay. Can I sleep on your couch, Wes? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Wicked, done, coming over. Share it with the cats, but yeah. Well, <laughs> they, they cuddle with me, fuck it. Yeah, 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 you got the couch, sure. Done, done. All right. Can I borrow one of you cats for cuddling? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I love animals. I, I don't actually have any pets out where I live at the moment because there's too many snakes. <laughs> I, I can't, like, have a dog or a cat because it'll just get eaten. Like, I legitimately opened my front door, and there was a five-foot-long python, and I was like, oh, it's a python, it's cute. But if it's a brown snake, I just slam the door and scream until it goes away, because they'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, I, from what I understand, we have, pretty much everything wants to fucking kill you in Australia. Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. We have the ten most deadly snakes in the world are in Australia, or like nine of the ten most deadly snakes are in Australia, the top nine. Like it's and, it's so fucked. Yeah. And pretty much like all the deadly spiders. Yep. Yeah. Just we've well, got we've got a few. We've got ones that if they bite you, your skin just turns necrotic and your limbs fall off. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty harsh. But we also have like really cool animals like kangaroos. I've got ten kangaroos in my garden where I live. Well, you also so, got, aren't, aren't there fucking uh, stoned koalas everywhere, too? Yeah, yeah, the koalas are pretty dopey. That's right. Well, I always understood that uh, eucalyptus is actually, like, get something drunk or stoned. Yeah, some people say that's not the case. Some people say they're just dopey by nature. So Others mm. say that it, it has a narcotic or, a, or a, an alcoholic effect on them. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're a pretty dopey creature. Like, uh, they're called koalas because in one of the many, there's so many Aboriginal languages, it's it, very beautiful uh, before we came and destroyed it all. Uh, in one of their uh, Aboriginal native languages, uh, koala means no water because no one, you know, saw them drinking water. They just stay in trees all the time. But they actually come out at night and go down and drink water from the watering holes and climb back up the, and, and have sex on the ground and then they climb back up the trees. Mm-hmm. They're actually really funny. If you you should look up on YouTube um, uh, koala mating sounds because they oh, have goodness. the most funny noises. They do. <laughs> so they uh, uh, they stretch their neck out and it elongates their windpipe and they get this like really deep guttural howl. It's it's really cool. Wow. Uh, and uh, we we have possums, not opossums like you guys. We have like possum possums, and they're a marsupial, and they're so cute. They're just they're very little buddies. I had one living on my veranda for a little while. He'd come and say hello every day. And uh, I, I had a kangaroo get into my house the other week. I, uh, I left my door open because it was really hot, so I just leave the screen doors closed. And I, uh, I had the curtain shut, but the screen door open, so I didn't see it when I went to bed. And when I got up in the morning, there was uh, kangaroo shit in my kitchen, and my couch had obviously been jumped on. <laughs> that is just not a thing that happens here. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I tell that to Australian people, they're like, fuck off. Like, just fuck off for being a stereotype. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, Next thing you're going to tell me is that you're going to go on walkabout. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be fun. I, I, I'd do a comedy walkabout. Like, if I came over to the States, I'd probably call it the uh, the, uh, the Australian walkabout tour so that people know that I'm from Australia and that I'm just wandering around doing my thing. Yeah. Then you could always put another shrimp on the barbie. We call them prawns, and they're much <laughs> larger and tastier. Would you have to cut it with a rather large knife? Uh, no, you just shell them. You just boil them up and shell them, and then, um, yeah, that's a good way to do them. Uh, you can do them on the barbie if you want, uh, but a lot of people just boil them up and then cool them off and then shell them and eat them cold. Or, or would you do that, or would you Sheila? Uh, no, I'd do that. You, pretty much everyone just sits around the table and... and grabs prawns you've got a, a bowl in front of you for shells and you just uh, dump your shells into the and a bowl for dipping your fingers in because it's nasty and nice. uh and yeah you just uh you just shell them and squeeze some lemon and salt and pepper on them and eat them some some people put you know sauce on them uh we put tomato sauce on pies and sausage rolls but we uh you wouldn't put so- tomato sauce on a on a prawn that'd be gross you put on mm. like a, a thousand island or a or a cocktail sauce yeah I, I was just trying to think of every horrible Australian stereotype I could think of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because Paul Hogan. Yes. Yeah, of course. No, your barefoot Sheila's busy in the kitchen making sandwiches. <laughs> Except she has trouble because she's pregnant, so she can't reach the counter. <laughs> Is she that short? Oh, yeah. They're all short. Oh, okay. Fair enough. 
No, nah, not all of them. Yeah, Australia has some very beautiful women. I should just throw that out there for any Aussie listeners. Very beautiful women in Australia. We've got some right moles as well, but, you know, that's that's a mixed bag everywhere you go. Hmm. Do you guys have the word mole? No, unless yeah. you're talking about this small creature with big giant teeth. Or the measurement of stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, a m- mole like like the animal. That's what some people call, like, they're women. If they're, a, if they're not a nice woman, then they might be a mole or they're a bit moly. Like if they talk really ochre and they've got a neck tattoo and five kids and they're on Centrelink and they're on, they're on, uh, bloody, uh, okay Cupid trying to find a man and they're like, if you can't accept me at my worst, you don't deserve me at me best, then they're a mole. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Right, we have a gender neutral term to describe people like that here and that's white trash. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Moles would be, it would be white trash. Like they're, they're female bogans really would be, would be moles. Yeah. I reckon. Could you actually define bogon just a little bit more besides neck tattoo? Yeah, they're, they're right. They're really rednecks. Like, bogans are rednecks. Uh, but they're not necessarily living out in the country. Like, there's a lot of bogans that live in the city. They uh, they drive utes. Uh, that said, oh. not everyone who drives a ute's a bogan. So if you're listening to this and you're like, hey, then I'm not talking about you, buddy. It's okay. Put it away. Um they, uh, yeah, they drink the shitty beer. They drink VB, probably, most likely. They're, uh, they're you to be full of old VB tins, uh, from, from getting loaded while they're driving around hooning and, uh, and yelling either racially charged slurs at people or, or sexist things. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's what a bogan would be. Jake okay. often gets into, uh, gets into confrontations with bogans because, uh, he takes the train. And so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of bogans on the train. You know, often you'll see them as, uh, you know, young couples having a domestic in public, uh, while their three year old is wandering into traffic. Like that, right. that's bogans. That's a bogan thing to do. Hmm. And they're yeah. all on ice. Is that meth? <laughs> yeah. We, we call it ice at okay. the moment. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds a lot like our, our white trash. Yeah. So pretty similar. There's parallels everywhere. Yeah. And, and if any of our listeners, if, if that sounds like you, then, well, Sorry. <laughs> we apologize for impugning your people, but your people should be less shit, so it's your own fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else? Let's try and up the uh, energy a little bit. Oh, we've been going for an hour. <laughs> cut bad, cut everything before this moment. Hello, dear listeners, and welcome to Atheist <laughs> Nomads. I'm your guest host, Nick Morgan Moore, comedian extraordinaire from sunny Queensland. I do the rooms around Brisbane and the Gold Coast. I am also a uh, guest slash possible co-host on the Imaginary Friend Show dot com podcast, brought to you by the amazing Jake Farwalton. With me today is Dustin Williams and Wesley the Nomad. Hi, guys. How you doing? Lovely. Thank you very yes, much, sir. Yes, very good. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, so, Wesley's last name isn't actually Denomad. Yeah, oh, I yeah. figured that. I did what? figure that. I also figured he probably wouldn't want me telling his real last name since I don't know it. And, and we're Facebook friends, fucker. No, uh, ah. but Bonetti. <laughs> Bonetti, that's right. Yeah. I forgot. I could only see this. what's directly in front of me at any one time. Uh, I have uh. I have no long-term memory. I also have no short-term memory. I've, I've often joked or mused that I have a pornographic memory because I am so good at porn. <laughs> My friends used to uh, used to do this test on me where they'd just bring up an image and they'd flash mm. it at me for one second and I'd be able to identify the porn star, even if her face wasn't in the frame. Wow. My uh, my absolute best claim to fame was I once identified a porn star for a friend from a from a description of her personality. <laughs> Holy crap! So yeah, that's how good I am at porn. Uh, yeah. So what's going on in your in your guys' lives? Anything inter- interesting happening soon? I just want to say there was a time that I could go you know one for one with you on that. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I definitely, after I left the church, I definitely became an expert at porn. That, uh, that really, really helped me. It also helped me, uh, get laid for the first time. That was, that was really, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Porn I, helped uh, you get uh, laid. Absolutely it did. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nice. I, uh, I had a friend, uh, a friend who I was living with. It was his birthday. His cousin was around. She was, a, she was a good looking Sheila, as you might say, if you were doing a, a racist parody of me. She was, right. she was a bit of all right. She was a bit of all right. No, I could tell that she was up for it. I, I asked her afterwards, like, when did you know that we were going to have sex? And she said, uh, right before I started talking to you. So that was, that, that was good. 
Uh, but m- my move, basically, she had her, her external hard drive there with her, and she was like, uh, do you want any TV shows? And I was like, yeah, because you know, that's what we do here, allegedly. It's illegal, so don't tell anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, just swapping TV shows off of the old hard drive. And so uh, we went into my room, and she plugged it into my heart, into my laptop. And I, I just said to her, you got any porn on there? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, give us some of that. And so she was giving me some porn. I said, what's your favorite one? And so she put it on and, uh, and started jilling off. And so I, I thought, all right, that's, that's what we're doing. We're just going to watch some porn and jack off. So I got mine out too. And she dived on me. So that, that was good. That was just, that was a nice way for it to happen. I reckon just, just cheap and dispassionate. The start of a lovely night. Yeah. Yeah. And, a, and a wonderful friendship. Yeah. It was good. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that, nice. That's, that's kind of magical. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was good. And she had absolutely no idea it was my first time. I, I often joke that like <laughs> it was the best thirty seconds of sex that anyone had ever had, but the reality is it took three days. We we were locked up, shacked up for three days, just going to town on each other. We walked out looking like we'd survived a zombie attack. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That kind of sounds like my first time. It, yeah. it was actually a, a a whole night. I you know yep. I got you know got the blankets out, got the. You know, I got little sodas, had a little cooler there, candles, yeah. radio, all that. And we just kept going the entire night. Poor girl walked bow, bow legged out of here. My first time, she didn't know, uh, couldn't tell that it was until I, yeah. I told her. And uh, yeah, I have to credit the porn on that. Yeah. Oh, dude, I learned so much from porn. I just you know, applied. People who say that you can't learn how to do sex from from watching porn they they just don't understand how online tutorials work hey eh? like that's how people learn stuff nowadays mm-hmm. like I, I wasn't shy oh, yeah. about anything we went dark straight away i think it was yeah i think it was probably a bit too much but you know it's, anyway it's all good but yeah three days we were shacked up in my room i i went out to get her some water and her cousin was like standing there in our living room with just the most shocked look on his face and he was like are you okay man <laughs> And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you're bleeding. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. But that, that was a good initiation. It's just gone uphill since there. So, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, Ikea knows what's up. You know, not a fucking word in the manual. It's all pictures. Completely yes. visual. Exactly right. Yeah. Now, to be fair, from porn, you're not going to learn how to be good at sex, but you'll at least have a decent idea of how the, the basics work. Yeah, I'm wondering if I was like one of those sex savants and it, I, I really, you know, hate the church for holding me back from enjoying that part of my life for so long. But at the same time, uh, the, being that repressed and that held back, it literally did take me three days to, to finish. And she was fine because she didn't have a job because she was a bogan. So we got to spend a good three days racked up together and it was awesome. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that, that whole, you know, tab A and a slot B, you know, yeah. Mm. Hmm. Like I, I reckon, I reckon the good thing about squirters is that you know for sure that you made them come. Like, <laughs> uh, like it's it's definitely you you can't fake squirt. Well, I guess you can if you pee, but at the same time, it, pee doesn't taste like squirt. So that's why people who say that pee uh, squirt is just pee, I disagree with them vehemently. I'm glad you do, but boy, do we have an article for you. <laughs> we'll, we'll send you a link later. I, I've seen that going around. I've also seen uh, refutations, mm-hmm. uh, multiple refutations. <laughs> it, so. it was it was shit yeah. science, but at least they're starting to do science on that. Yeah, they're, yeah, at least, yeah, they're starting. <laughs> yes, they're starting to do science on sex. That's that's yeah. correct. Because up till that point, everything you heard about squirting was women saying men have no room to talk about it and only speaking mm. from their own experience, or mm. men saying, "Yeah, some can." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess if a girl wants to pee on my face, I'll let her do it. Like, if it does something for her. Like, that's the other thing about me. I'm a feminist. I'll, I will eat a girl's ass if she wants me to. Pause for I'm laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward laugh. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, sure. yeah, hmm. that, that's not the most feminist thing that I've ever done. A, a girl asked me out and so as a as a sort of a quid pro quo quality thing uh i just said to her all right where are you taking me and she was she was great she she rose to the challenge she uh she took me out to a nice restaurant and bought me dinner uh we went to see a movie and then she dropped me home and before i got out of the car i ate her out because i'm a feminist you know i believe in equality definitely nice yeah man yeah 
So that's yeah. We've gone we've gone to the sex thing now. We've we've got religion and sex mm-hmm. a little bit on the comedy. What else do you guys want to know? Yeah, just here, here, three cheers, man. <laughs> 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 yep, dude, this has kind of been fun. Yeah, we yeah. Should- sorry for being so subdued at the start, there, guys. I yeah, depressing morning. Looking at the <laughs> looking at the uh, looking at my news feed. It's an awful place for me to live right now. Mm. I, uh, I I'm looking forward to uh, using the comedy to take me around the world, and when it does, I'll definitely be hitting you guys up. Well, you're welcome to stay in my little shit place with a couple thousand movies. Ah, oh, wicked. It sounds yeah. fun. If you're trying to get away from a place where the local news makes you depressed, don't come see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, th- I think like, a- the worst part is that like one of the first places that I absolutely have to hit when I come to America is, uh, is Alabama. <laughs> I got some friends there who are just like, you have to come visit me. It's killing me here. Oh. So... <laughs> So yeah, I think one of my first stops, if not my first stop, like it will be Alabama. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I, I, uh, I cry for them. Yeah, well, uh, my friend get, will know. When yeah. you get there, be sure to eat lots of barbecue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Whatever get, get weight lost, the- you will gain back down there. <laughs> if it's not fried, then it's well battered and then fried. Yeah, they're explaining to me that uh, often the uh, often the salads that they get served over the majority of it is cheese and bacon. Uh, oh, yeah. Which, <laughs> yeah, it just sounds like a bad place. That's and if your crazy. spoon doesn't stand up in your sweet tea, they're doing it wrong. Oh, gross! No, yeah. dude, I, I I honestly could get even skinnier from going there because I just won't eat that crap. <laughs> <laughs> which I hope so. I want to get really skinny. That'd be so good. And uh, alligator. Oh, alligator you gotta oh, yeah. eat yourself some gator yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I've had crocodile. good yeah we, we've got crocodile here that you can have hmm. yeah pretty much only had it as jerky though hmm. but uh yeah tasty good stuff the the gator i had was kind of i guess the nuggets on a kebab as i recall it was a few years back uh tastes like chicken kind of tough chicken yeah oh, okay. mm, they, they reckon the same about uh about crocodile but i don't reckon like just from the jerky that i had it just tastes kind of like a different kind of beef you know mm. i put it on par with beef uh, but i guess maybe if you're eating it fresh and, and cooking it up it might be different but yeah yeah we get, we've got so many crocs here going back to that everything here is trying to kill you yeah they have to do a <laughs> cull in the northern territory and north queensland every year otherwise crocodiles would just take over the entire country and eat everyone <laughs> wow yeah yeah, I, I saw the biggest one that I've seen in person was almost six meters long, and it was wow. called Holy, and it was at, at at a zoo, and it could jump six meters out of the water. Holy shit! What the fuck? Yeah, like uh, a crocodile can jump nose to tail out of the water. So this thing was just it, it weighed like a ton. It was so big, it looked like a bloody uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and uh, yeah. I, I discovered in my readings that uh, crocodiles used to walk on land with legs long like a horse's legs. Uh, and I w- was very happy that evolution took that away from them because they don't need anything else. <laughs> They're already terrifying enough. Man, I know the gators yeah. in, in the U.S. can actually sleep in trees, get, get up in trees. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, rare, if, but if they you've do. Got a, if you've got a croc chasing you, they tell you to just climb a tree because otherwise it'll get you. Well, and then you've got the saltwater crocodile, which are basically just straight up sea monsters. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They get so big. I saw a photo of one from New Guinea that had an entire tribe holding it up, and it was a close to 10 meters long. It was just so big. <laughs> so that's, oh, that's another reason not to go to New Guinea if you're an asylum seeker. One, you're not going to find asylum, and two, crocodiles 10 meters long. Although I, I, I would posit that more people have been hacked to death by machetes than uh, than eaten by crocodiles. So you hope that the Australian Navy finds you, not the crocodiles. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Although the outcome's the same: horrible death in a very sad place. <laughs> Damn, man, I'm depressed. Far <laughs> out. All right, I'll have to Somebody- cut out that that last little bit of depression, so we we end on a nice happy note. <laughs> Somebody sponsored me to come to the states. I will tell jokes. <laughs> Uh, yeah awesome all right work for fried for deep fried twinkies about that yeah 
Yeah, I've never had a Twinkie. That's something that's on my list to try once and then never try ever again. So do you have anything to uh, promote other than your uh, asylum attempt? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Nick Morganmore. That's my That's my name. name. Ah, you listen to the show. That's good. You can also, uh, as of this week, one of my fans started me a Facebook page because they said, you're big enough to have a Facebook page now. And so they started me a Facebook page and it's got like 50 likes. So if we could double that, mm, 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 it's, uh, <laughs> it's on Facebook. It's, uh, just type in my name, Nick Morganmore. That's my name. And you'll find me. Uh, you'll also find my comedian Facebook page. So give that a like. I will be plugging gigs and other things that I do on there. Stay tuned as well because I will be starting a YouTube channel. I've had a lot of people hitting me up to start one. Uh, I don't really have good technology here right now. Uh, partially because I'm a broke, cheap-ass comedian, so I can record videos off of my phone and not edit them. Uh, and I was considering doing that for a while, and then I thought, uh, try try and get something better. So I'm, I'm saving up for a camera and, uh, and some sound equipment so that I can do a good YouTube channel, uh, launch it right, do it good. Um, I've got a couple clips up there, but they've just been taken from phones, so you, could, you have to listen really hard to hear that just how disgusting they are. But, uh, yeah, hit me up on all the social medias and look for me in the world because I'll be traveling there soon to do my comedy. By the way, Nick, what's your favorite sex position? Uh, probably the pile driver, I reckon. What about the Australian? Oh, the Australian. Uh, the Australian. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I invented the Australian. You want me to tell it? Okay. Uh, you see, everyone I know talks about their favorite sex position or all the ones that they know. I invented one. It's called the Australian. What me and my partner would do is go out back and hurl racial slurs at each other until one of us drops dead from heat exhaustion. Uh, the person who dies is the loser. The winner gets to fuck the corpse. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's a little taste of my comedy right there for you. I actually go way, way, way worse than that, eh? Like, that's, that's sort of where it starts with me. But, uh, you know, it's nuanced. It's, it's, uh -huh. it's clever because I, I, I incorporate levels. themes, you know, like, yes, yeah. Australians are incredibly racist. Yes, Australia is really hot. Yes, I would fuck a corpse if that was the only <laughs> thing that was available to me at the time. So, you know, like, it's, it's just a, it, it's a multi-layered thing. Yeah. yeah. The only thing you're missing is the fighting off snakes and crocodiles. Uh, man, like, I wouldn't have gotten to 28 years of age if I didn't know how to do that real good. <laughs> Uh, all right cheers yeah. man that was good yeah okay awesome been, good talking to you guys it's been great talking to you thanks for joining us thank you for listening to another episode of atheist nomads you can find us online at www.atheistnomads.com contact us at contact at atheistnomads.com or leave us a voicemail message at 541-203-0666. You can also like us on Facebook or leave us a review on iTunes, Zoom, or wherever else you find the podcast. Until next time, this has been The Atheist Nomads.